my beloved the message that god has given me this morning you have to go through the wilderness if you want to go to the promised land you have to go through the wilderness if you want to go to the promised land there are many people in the church today they wants to go to the promised land but they are not willing to go through the wilderness they are trying to find shortcuts there is no shortcut in the kingdom of god my beloved that's the way god work if anybody wants to go to the promised land you have to go through the wilderness and uh, you may have dreams in the same time you must be you must be going through adversity as god has a plan and a purpose and has he has given us a covenant he is a covenant keeping god turn with me to book of romans chapter 3 verse 3 Romans 3 verse 3 For what I for what if some did not be believe will their unbelief make the faithful of God without faith without fact certainly not indeed let God be true but every man a liar as it is written that you may be justified in your words and may overcome when you are judged st paul says for what if some did not believe will their unbelief make the faithfulness of god without effect though the people are not believing their unbeliefs will not change the truth and the facts of god and the faithfulness of god and also secondly he says certainly not indeed let god be true but every man a liar as it is written what is there for him to say let god be true god is true there is no other truth he is the truth but why paul says let god be true god wants our permission to do what he has planned in our life without our will he will not do anything israelites were crying to god for the deliverance from their slavery with their permission only god came down with and chose moses to send them send him to the egyptians to deliver them from the pharaoh's hand as god has given you and me will if you permit him if you give permission for god to fulfill his plan and his purpose in your life and in my life he will so to others that he is true that is what it says let god be true for god to show that he is true through us we should allow him to do what he has planned to do in our life there are people with their own will they do not want to get deliverance some people i have heard even if they die they don't want to change even if they go to hell they don't want to forgive their enemies and uh, with their own decisions according to their will they choose destruction now my theme is 
you have to go through the wilderness for your promised land to go to your promised land with this idea turn with me to book of exodus chapter 14 verses from 10 to 16 book of exodus chapter 14 verses from 10 to 16 I can hear another preacher somewhere here in the congregation. Hello. Exodus chapter 10 verse chapter 14 verses from 10. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes and behold the Egyptians marched after them. so they were very afraid and the children of israel cried out to the lord then they said to moses because there were no graves in egypt have you taken us away to the to die in the wilderness why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of egypt is this not the word that we told you in egypt saying let us alone that we may serve the egyptians for it would have been better for us to save the egyptians that save the egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness and moses said to the people do not be afraid stand still and set the salvation of the lord and see the salvation of the lord which he will accomplish for you today for the egyptians who you see today you shall see again no more forever the lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace and the lord said to moses why do you cry to me tell the children of israel to go forward but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it divide it and the children of israel shall go on the dry ground through the midst of the sea now beloved this people after they were they brought from egyptians from their slavery god saved them and brought them on the way as they saw in front of them the red sea the behind they saw the pharaoh's soldiers were coming behind them and they saw that there were 600 chariots pharaoh sent with good soldiers who can fight and also with the huge soldiers with 600 good chariots as they saw them coming behind them they were so uh, they were so afraid they were living in the threat fear of threat and uh, also fear of threat of the failure my beloved they forgot the mighty hand of god how he has brought them from their slavery and saved them they forgot the 10 plagues that god sent into egypt before they brought them out they saw how god my with with mighty hand how god saved them but now they have forgotten everything now they are mad with moses and speaking against him and ask him why did you allow us didn't you allow us to stay there and did you brought us to die in the wilderness it is good for us to go back if you are not willing to allow god to do what he wants in your life and if you want to go back my beloved god will not be able to help you there are many people when they see the enemies coming behind them they decide to give up and go back 
when they see the wilderness they do not want to go in the, into the through the wilderness or oh, into the wilderness they wants to go back to the same places where they were and they didn't want god to fulfill the plans and purpose of god in their life that is why they are not successful in their spiritual life as their personal lives today now the moses says verse 13 exodus exodus chapter 14 verse 13 and moses said to the people do not be afraid stand still and set the salvation and see the salvation of the lord when the enemy is coming behind you don't be afraid be still and know that he is god be still and see the salvation of the lord don't look to the power of the enemy God's power is more greater than the power of the enemy. The word of God says greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. The greater one he is in our hearts. He is living with us. He is with us. And he can fight on behalf of you and for me. And he said the battle is battle belongs to him. He will fight for you and fight for me. that's why paul said in second timothy 17 god has not given to us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind you have to give up your safety for your salvation you trying to save god yourself you can't do that with your own strength if you need salvation give up your safety for your salvation and also god wants us to have the real communication with him he expect us to have real communication in order to show us the way in order to tell us what is in his mind about our life what plans he has in his mind and what he is going to do through our life and he wants to explain what is in his mind to us so he expect us to have a communication with him if you turn with me to jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11 to 14 jeremiah chapter 29 verses from 11 to 14 Jeremiah 29:11 to 14 For I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope Now God will not condemn you and me. People though they love you though they say that they love you though they promise that they will no, never leave you when you made a small mistake they forget all the good things that you have done. They are like demon possessed with anger and hate and bitterness they will condemn you but god he will never condemn you he will never condemn me god who created us with his own image and with his own likeness god who became a man on behalf of you and me god who gave one begotten son to die on the cross for you and for me god who raised his son from the dead gave resurrection because of you and me 
because he wants to have constant fellowship with you and me he doesn't want to leave you and no leave me he will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of this world so he says for thus says the lord after sorry for i know the thoughts that i think towards you he's thinking he has thoughts about you and he wants you to know that he has a thought about you he's thinking about you and says the lord thoughts of peace no thoughts of condemnation he thinks about you and me about the thoughts of peace in other words he wants us to give peace into our mind and our heart and to our life and to the church of the lord jesus christ to the bride of christ he wants to give peace he think about you and me and he wants to give thoughts of peace to you and me and also he said he will he will not thought about evil he don't thinks any evil about you and me to give you future and a hope he wants to give us a future and a hope that is why he says i want to have a communication with you a real communication face to face communication i actually tasted that in the morning this morning after as anoma said the spirit of the lord is coming down and worship him and i close my eyes and i said i want you to i want to come to your presence really lord and i saw how how much desire he has to be close to us to have communion with us to have a communication with us he wants to give us he think of me and he wants to give me the peace not thoughts of evil he don't think evil things about me and you because we are his children he is our abba father and then the verse 12 says you will call upon me and go and pray to me and i will listen to you you know your problem my beloved you go and talk to somebody who doesn't want even to listen to you when you're trying to open your heart to some people it's a headache to them it doesn't they doesn't want to hear listen because the main reason that they can't help you if they speak out something they will say something horrible something against god's will they might give wrong advice wrong counseling that is why god does not want you and me to go to any other person he is waiting to give us the counseling he said you come come to me and pray for me i will listen and he is desiring to listen to you and me so why don't you go to him and talk to him have a real communion with him have a real communication with him open your heart to him and then listen to him do what he says and he will not do these things without your permission he is waiting till you come with your own will and verse 13 says and you will seek me and find me sometimes when you are in trouble you are trying to seek someone who loves you you can't find him or see they are far away from you but he is here always he is near to us than the breath of our nostrils and why we go behind him when beings why we go behind go behind the so called loved ones there is no one love you and me more than him 
No one ever cared for you and for me more than him. He says, and you will seek me and find me. When you seek him, you will find him. When you search for me with all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back from your captivity. Glory be to God. God is expecting you and me to have a communication with him, a real communication. As he says, Isaiah 54, verse 17, no weapons that formed against you will not prosper because he is fighting against the things that are coming against us. He's fighting against the enemy. He's fighting the enemy who comes with the weapons. He bring, he bring them down with his mighty power. And he is our protector. When you are searching for him, draw closer to him. Draw nigh unto him. You will see his glory. Hallelujah. And secondly, when you start to have communication, you will have conflict. As Israelites were having, Moses was having communication with God. And there were conflict against him. Without conflicts also, you can't go to the promised land. And thirdly, God asked from Moses as he was also crying to the Lord. So God says, what did I say to you, Moses? Take the rod and stretch forth your hand towards the sea. And Red Sea was divided. First time in the history. They were walking in the middle of the sea. Footprints, footprint of all the men and women and children and babies. First time in the history in the middle of the Red Sea. As he stretched forth his hand. Third thing you have to stretch forth your hand with what you see before you without fear, by faith. Then the Lord will begin to work. At the end of the journey, God closed the door for the enemy. When God closed the door, no man will not be able to open again. And uh, what God showed them, God said to Abraham, the seed of Abraham will be in the slavery for 400 years. 400 years were finished. Now there will be no more slavery. The time of deliverance has come. But these people didn't want a deliverance. They wanted to go back as they got afraid of the enemy who has come behind them. God will never change his word. God will never change his promises. God will never change his covenant. As they were coming behind them, God closed the door for them and said, the enemy that you see today, you will never see again. This is the last day that you are, you're going to see your enemy. And he will be destroyed in the same way that you are saved. May God bless you with...